In this video, we're going to take a look at successive ionization energies, and we're going to see how we can use data values from successive ionization energies to figure out some of the electronic structures of um, different elements. So we first need to talk about what successive ionization energies are. Well, if you recall, ionization energy is defined as removing an electron from a gaseous element to create a positively charged ion, um, thus releasing an electron. Uh, this is our first ionization energy. Okay, so this is taking away the first electron. You can actually continue to take electrons away. So for example, the second ionization energy would be taking another electron away from an X plus ion to create an X two plus ion and an electron. Or the third ionization energy would be taking that X two plus ion, removing another electron to create an X plus three ion and so forth. Um, as you kind of go and take more and more electrons away from an element, it gets harder and harder to do so because the, that element then is becoming increasingly positive. So the positive charge is increasing more and more, making um, it hold on to those electrons a lot more tightly. So the general trend, if we were to graph the ionization number against uh, its ionization energy, is we would see an increase over those ionization energies. So if we look a bit closer at across one period, so going across period three and looking at sodium all the way to argon, we can look at the values for these ionization energies. And we can get some really interesting data and um, notice some really interesting things if we look at the differences between the ionization energies. So if we look at sodium, this first sort of difference is about 4,000. Okay, we're jumping quite, quite a bit here. But then each su successive jump is about, well, that one's around 2,000-ish. Again, well, there may be about 2,500, right? And if we kind of keep going, they're all fairly similar. There might be some slight variations, but really not much there. Um, if we take a look at the next one, and we're just going to do a couple of these. This jump here for magnesium, around 700, and then we get a jump of about 6,000-ish, and then this one's about, yeah, was that, about 3,000, and so on, 3,000, and so on, okay? And if we take a look at one more, aluminum, we got a jump here of what, about 1,300? Uh, Again, this one's around a thousand, um, but then a really, really big jump from, uh, what do we got, around 9,000 or so there, okay? Um, so what's really neat here is that some of these smaller jumps, um, if they're kind of going against a trend, can tell you information about it going from, say, an S to a P-type orbital or a D-type orbital within the same main energy level. But these giant jumps, so the ones like here, or here, or here, are jumps that are happening because we're transitioning to a different main energy level. Um, and so it becomes increasingly more difficult to take that electron away. That can give us information about how many valence electrons. So sodium has one so its next ionization energy is going to be really, really big because it's going to be hard to take that one away. Magnesium has two valence electrons. The next ionization energy is really hard again to take that electron away. And aluminum's got three valence electrons. And then that next jump is really big because, again, that one's hard to take away. And so on and so forth. So this trend continues across any of those elements. So what does that mean? Well, we could take a table of various different sort of ionization energies and we can figure out how many valence electrons the element has for sure. We might also be able to glean some information about how many are in S, P, or D type orbitals depending on where those smaller shifts happen. 
So really when you're given data like this, like this particular example here, you're looking at the differences between the two. So um, for element P, that one's about 700. And then this one's about, what, five, 6,000 or so. Um, so that's a really big jump. Okay, so that's to me is telling me that we have two valence electrons here. Okay, so this is likely an element that's in group six or group 16. If we look at the one below, look at some of the jumps. So we got about 900 here, uh, where we got about a thousand here, and then we got about 2,000 here. Uh, 49 to 62, oh, that was about 1,500-ish. And then we've got, wow, that's a massive jump, right? 6 to 21,000. Um, so, you know, these sort of jumps are all kind of in a range. Like this one's kind of big, but um, this is where our massive jump is happening. So for me, the way I'd interpret that, whoops, let's get a highlighter going here is that there's one, two, three, four, five valence electrons here. Okay, um, that's sort of how then you would go and interpret some of this data and take a look and see what sort of uh, number of valence electrons there are. That's it then for this video. Let's move on to our next task.